for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Welcome back to our video series on um, working with CSS and Dreamweaver CS5. In this video, I'm going to begin to show you a little bit about the way you can use CSS to format images. You'll see here, I've just got a basic HTML document. I'll go ahead and look at the source code here. It's just got a few paragraphs and a couple of images. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into a split view here. And I'm going to look at the CSS and I'm going to look at the live view over here in this panel. So you can see the changes as they apply. Now the first three properties that we're going to look at as far as applying to images are the padding and margin property and the border property. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this off by creating a tag style for the image tag. Now you would never actually do this. You would always uh, you know, enclose your images in a div tag and then use it to create a descendant selector if you were going to apply a style to an IMG. Um, otherwise, all the images on your page would get that particular style, and that probably will not um, work for your page. So I'm going to go ahead and say that these images should have 20 pixels of padding on them. And I'm going to go ahead and close my style and save it. When I click over here, you'll see I now have 20 pixels of padding around both of my images. Now, just as with all of your other um, CSS properties or when you apply padding. You can specify this as one value and it will apply 20 pixels all the way around. You could specify it as two values which would apply let me go ahead and change that here. In this case it's going to apply 20 pixels top and bottom and 50 pixels left and right. When I click you'll see they moved over because I added the 50 pixels there. So you can do one unit and have it go all the way around, two units and have the first set denote top and bottom, and the second set denote left and right, or you could do three, and, or I'm sorry, you could do, I'm sorry, you could do four values here, and this would be top, right, bottom, left. And you can see that moves over and moves them down a little bit. And you can remember the order very easily by just remembering that it goes clockwise from the top. Top, right, bottom, and then left. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to just a single value there of 20 pixels. And click in there I see my spacing take effect. Now, before we do margin, let's go ahead and put a border around our images. Now, again, you can do just plain old border, and it will put a border all the way around your image, or you could do border bottom, border top, border left, border right, to exactly specify where the border is that you want. In our case, we're just going to do border because we want it to go all the way around the image. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to be a one pixel border. The second parameter I'm going to do is the color code. And the third parameter I'm going to put in is the style. Remember, you need those three parameters for a border operation the width, and the color, and the style. And then I'll go ahead and click over here, and you'll see that border has gone around the image. Now, margin, unlike padding, is on the outside of, a, of an object or an item. So if I put 20 pixels of margin around here, you're going to see I get an additional 20 pixels here, here, and here. And just like padding, you can do a single value, a double value for top and bottom, left and right, or four values for top, bottom, left, and then right. Now, since I used the image tag to create this style and didn't specify a div, 
Again, this style will be applied to all the images on our page. So this may not be the best way to format our images. So I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to go ahead and cut those and then just delete the entire item there. And I'll click over here and you'll see that our images go back to normal. So instead of using an image tag, I'm going to go ahead and create a class style. And the class style will allow me to apply the properties that I chose. Let me go ahead and clean that up there a little bit. To individual items. So I went ahead and saved that. And you're going to go ahead and see I click over here and nothing on my images. And, but if I go ahead and apply that style to these images, watch what happens. I'm going to go into design view here because I like, uh, and I'm going to turn live view off because I like these right click shortcut menus where you can come in and edit tags or remove tags, do different things, and apply CSS styles. And you're going to see there is my test style. I right, go ahead and click on that, and you're going to see it applied the CSS style. To that image. Didn't apply to that image. I could also get to that from the properties panel there and change the class style right there. And now they both have that. And to remove it, I could just simply come in here and properties and change the class to none. It takes that off. So class style gives you a little bit more flexibility than the uh, tag style does. Now the th third way to do this would be not to use a class or just a, a tag style on its own, but to create a div and then apply the style to the div. And you'll learn more about positioning and formatting with uh, divs in our CSS positioning series. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality, so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the uh, website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.